to love and to serve others because love's work is truly never done. Please welcome John. 
Sean Mitchell. Um, and I am brand loyal to Jim State at Prince Academy. And it is the absolute pleasure to be able to be with all of you today. I invite you to bow your heads with me. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this opportunity, for this moment. Um, Lord, as we spend some moments in reflection, I uh, want to invite you to be present with us. In your name, amen. How good and pleasant it is when God's people live. How good and pleasant it is when God's people live together, live together in unity. Gem State alumni, young and young of spirit, happy Sabbath and good Sabbath. Can you believe that it has been 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90 years since you graduated? <laughs> Not to make you feel old, but you are. <laughs> I don't know if you resonate with this, but I consider alumni. I don't know if you resonate with this, but I consider alumni weekends to be slightly odd. I have specific memories of when I was a student here, thinking I can't wait to get out of this place. And yet we bring everybody here. Granted, everybody comes here because they want to reflect and reminisce not sit through classes. <laughs> and here I am, back at Alumni Weekend. Uh, very lucky to be here. My graduating class has a Facebook chat that we uh, communicate with each other on, and uh, oftentimes people will just randomly post a, uh, a memory such as, Am I crazy, but was there a class period where Mr. Soule didn't show up to class for 30 minutes and then came in and apologized because he fell asleep in his car? <laughs> they weren't crazy. Or remember when Dean I Wasson would make scones for everyone on Sabbath morning and pound sodas for everybody Friday night? Well, in an attempt to elicit a similar memory, I posted on there, what are some moments or, or instances in your, your time here at Gem State that were key for you. And the first comment was, uh, I want to read it word for word because it, it's, it stood out to me. We can't write your speech for you, John. Nice try. <laughs> I love stories. Jesus loves stories. We know that. I don't know your story, but I want to share some portions of my story with you as it pertains to Gem State Academy. I grew up in Baker City, Oregon, um, which for those of you who don't know where it is, that's fine. Um, I am the middle child, which I know you're thinking, middle child, perfect child. That's correct. My parents are here today, so if you see them, you remind them if they need a reminder. I have my older brother, Josh, and my younger sister, Jamie. Now, we were all blessed to be forced uh, to go to Adventist education for the majority of our academic career. Uh, I do have one year of public school, uh, kindergarten, so I know the rough life. <laughs> I remember Gem State coming to our little elementary school, and they would have their gymnastics team perform for us on our concrete gym floor, and now I don't know how they didn't get concussions, but they, they made it through. I remember the choir coming to our little church and performing. I remember uh, different entities coming and just speaking to our class. I remember Mike Schwartz, the previous principal here, coming to my eighth grade graduating class of four. Um, I remember going to Camp Idahaven as a camper 
and interacting with the staff, and they would share their experiences uh, at Kent State. And those seeds were planted in my mind where I knew that I wanted to go to Jim State Academy. I have my own theories of why my parents agreed to send me to Jim State. Uh, I think that there are one of two reasons. Maybe they had the foresight of the kind of teenager that I was gonna be and saw that it would probably be good to send me to an, uh, a boarding academy. Connected to that, maybe because they saw that, they saw that they may, might need a four year break from me, and so it's good to send me away for four years. That's one of the two. I think my parents wanted to make sure that there were extra eyes on me, and so they made sure to send my older brother, Josh, with me here uh, in hopes that he would either protect me or uh, there would be witness to the things that I would do so that they wouldn't be able to report to them. He didn't, but uh, you know, you, you hope. Um, I'm sure that it was difficult. I know that it was difficult the first time that my parents dropped us off here. Um, and I assume that it got easier the older that we got, the more it was like, oh, we're gonna miss you, and now it's like, get out. <laughs> but my parents did good in deciding to send myself and my siblings here. What was the good that got you here? What are the stories that made your time here good? I, I love the fact that Principal Sule pointed out uh, Blizzard Butte. Uh, one of my favorite and earliest memories of being at Jim State deals with Blizzard Butte. There was uh, a tradition, which to this day I don't understand. I don't know if it's still done, but that year, the graduating class of 2002-2003, uh, at the end of the program at Blizzard Butte, um, they decided that they would throw their shoes down the hill. Um, I don't know what that represents. Maybe someone else can smell my feet. Um, but uh, one of my other favorite people in the world, Nathan Congleton and I, we didn't really know each other that well back then, but he and I heard that they were gonna do this and uh, we decided that we were gonna do something about it. Now, Principal Sule gave a beautiful, the hike is, is, is a trek, but you have the cross there and you get to be together as, a, as a, a school family and then to enjoy that moment at the beginning of the school year. Sometimes there's students that have ulterior motives um, so as soon as they threw their shoes, Nathan and I ran down the hill, filled our little freshman arms up with shoes, and booked it to the bus. For some reason, the seniors were not pleased. Because they had someone that was down there that was supposed to pick up the shoes and walk them then back up. That didn't happen. They had to come down the hill, no shoes. Why is that a good memory? Well, it was bonding for Nathan and I. <laughs> a point of pride for me was that I was able to participate in uh, the basketball team when I was here. And uh, I, I have many great memories of, of that. I, I actually, my freshman year, I was able to be the, the person that scored the first two points for our, our, our season that year. And I, I hold that very, very dear to my heart. Um, it was a year where Greg Davies, he was the, had stepped down from varsity and decided to coach JV. And if you know anything about Greg Davies, is Greg Davies runs his team like an NBA team, and we ran a lot. But we were prepared. Um, I'll be vulnerable with you all. I was not the greatest student my freshman year here. Um, and... Uh, in an attempt to encourage me to be better in my studies, my parents went to Greg Davies and said, hey, we want our son to do better in classes, so please don't play him until he gets his grades up, which is great advice. That's a great motivating factor. Get your grades up, you deserve to play basketball. The problem was that was never communicated to me to, that that was contingent on me playing and so I would just sit on the bench and be like, well, maybe next year. And then at the end of the season, Greg Davies came up to me and he said, John, I wish I could have played you more. Your parents told me not to play you until you got your grades up. And I said, what? <laughs> Good memories. Um, 
there was one moment where he did let me play, uh, and I was sitting on the bench, and he came over to me and he said, John, are you ready to get in the game? And I looked at him and I said, yes, I am. And he said, okay, get in the game. And I said, now? And he said, yep. So I got off the bench and just ran onto the court. Now, if you know anything about basketball, that's not allowed. So our team got a technical foul and everybody glared at me and I was like, well, should talk to my parents apparently. <laughs> Good memories. Being in the dorm, man, I could spend hours talking to you about being in the dorm throughout my time here. Not all of them are Sabbath appropriate, so uh, after this event and, and after sundown, please come and find me. I'm sure more happy sharing those stories with you. Um, but the love and the support that I received from the deans, from David Iwasa, was very influential in my life and led me to want to get into being a dean myself. And I'm forever grateful for what he did. I have a renewed appreciation for the faculty and staff here at Penn State because at Walla Walla, the amount of work that you do here at Jim State, those are the students that I get. And so the great work that you do here affects my work. And that's not, I can't say that about any of our sister schools. There are certain schools that I see them coming into my dormitories and I say, ooh, ooh. But as soon as I see Jim State, I'm saying, no, they need to update that. If I could have a dorm full of Josh Epstein and uh, Kayla Hastings, then uh, I'd have a very, very good reference hall. I am proud of the work that Jim State is doing for our current students. I am proud to see the product of Jim State Academy. To be able to sit here and see the, the numbers that, uh, that we're doing here. As a student, I couldn't really care that much about that, but seeing that now, that is, that is God working in our institution. We are blessed to have the faculty and staff and administration that we have. Um, and that's us getting out of the way of God doing his work. Getting out of the way of God doing his good work. There are so many moments that I could talk about. Working at Bacon Serve. Seeing Frankie Herrera being chased by Mrs. Kravitz for missing classes. <laughs> Getting put on social. Warm fuzzies. Convincing someone off campus to call the dean impersonating my mom so that I could get off campus and go to the theater. Corn roast. Afterglow. Student week of prayer. Flower Vespers, Donkey Basketball, Flower Bombs, Basketball and Volleyball Tournaments, Relationships Starting, Relationships Ending, Relationships Starting Again, Relationships Ending Again, Relationships Starting Again, Relationships Ending Again. Maybe that's just me. Bible Conferences, Sabbath Afternoon Activities, Corn Mazes, Fall Festivals, being, being fed by the staff and faculty. So many good moments. How have these moments that you've experienced affected you? What has the good of these moments done for you to continue to do good today? What is it about these good moments that creates in you the desire to reflect and to revisit them? How can you take these good moments to create more good moments? Look around you. Notice who from your graduating class is not here with me today. What was the good that they brought? What was the good you experienced with them? What is the good that you can reach out to them and experience again? This is a great moment to reflect on those good moments. But this is not where the good moments should come to die. I say this to remind you that God the Father is the source of goodness and strength. Do not grow weary of doing good. The Father wants to give you that strength to continue to do good, and he can 
through him the temptation of getting lost in the not good has been defeated. It's good to be reminded of the good that has happened. But how best to honor that good than by spreading it and living it anew. Rejoice in the fact that you are here to celebrate goodness. Don't let goodness die for the next few years until you come back. Let the Father be our heading and our compass to what is good to guide us from here on out. As Jamie said, there's enough bad out there to distract us from the good. It can be a battle to focus on the good, especially when you're in the depths of the bad. But the good news is that the Father is the source of goodness and will provide us the strength to rest in that goodness. The bad news is easy. The hard work is finding the good in the bad. And that's why the Father has given you and given us the gift of our time here. Use the good moments to be an oasis in the bad. Reference those good moments to create new moments to feed you in the future. The same God that gave us those good moments is the same God that gave David the Psalms, gave Solomon the Proverbs, inspired Paul to change his life. We have the same access to that same God. That is the same God that we have as the source of our goodness. Celebrate each other. Celebrate those moments. Celebrate the fact that we had those good moments. And remember those moments. Don't mourn the fact that alumni weekends come and go. Rejoice in the fact that if we never have another one here on this campus, that we will have another one very soon. And that the Father has created the good moments here and the good moments that will come will far outshine those. The bad is still here. But the goodness that we will experience is going to feed us. It's going to prepare us for when we have deeper bad moments. But we have to do the work to appreciate those good moments. Moments like these, where we are sitting together as friends and family who are binded by the fact that we love JK Academy. If we let that go, then we're drifting off. But the fact is, is that in the same moment as that we have those around us that, or those that are not around us that were in our graduating class, if we leave it at the fact of, man, I wish they were here, we have an opportunity to reach out, throw them a lifeline, and bring them back. The reason why they're not here can be a myriad of reasons. But that doesn't mean that we stop it at, well, another alumni come and gone. We have to do the work. The good work of remembering the good moments. And rejoice and rest in those good moments. That is the good news. Make the good news your work and don't grow weary of doing it. Let's bow our heads. Dear Holy Father, you have given us the gift of each other. Lord, as we leave this place, it is not that we leave each other, it is that we are stepping into a world that is full of hurt and pain. And you feel that hurt and pain, but you are with us. And Lord, you provide us the peace that passes all understanding because you are the Lord of peace. Fill us with that goodness that we may grow. Thank you. In your name we pray.
just a few announcements before we break for lunch and afternoon activities. Um, I hope that you've already been blessed by the things that have happened up here this morning. Um, our chef and alumni, actually himself, um, has prepared a delicious meal for us to eat for lunch. Um, it's offered to all. Um, there's a request for donations if you feel so inclined. There will be buckets at the beginning um, of the line there. Um, and if we can start the line at this end, the store right over here, and then we'll come out at this store. That will make things flow a little bit better. You can find on page seven of your programs a list of honor classes and the rooms that we have provided for you to meet and eat lunch together and fellow together. Uh, there will be a senior at or near each of your rooms um, for any assistance that you might need in that moment. Um, they have nice bright pink name tags so that they are very easy for you to find. Um, we did need to make one change from the program. We have uh, the class of 1954 will be in the student lounge, which is right across the hall from the conference room or the heritage room, um, where the class of 1969 will be meeting this morning. Um, also on page seven of your program, um, you will find the time that your honor class is allotted to come and get a reunion photo taken. Um, we'll be meeting right here in the gym this year to take the reunion class photo. If you would like to purchase a photo so that you can have a keepsake, they're just $5 and we have ways for you to um, either pay here or to uh, pay later. Um, there will be a senior also here for you to um, get all of that information from. Uh, at 2.15, there will be a special ceremony dedicating our new flagpole and um, at our updated baseball diamond behind the school, um, which has been generously donated by members of the class of 1964, and they would love for you to join us for that dedication service. Where is it? The baseball field is this direction behind the gym, and uh, there will be a few of us there, so hopefully you can find and follow the crowd. Um, the Gem State Music Department, as you've heard earlier, is putting on a concert this afternoon. It will be in the church, just down the hall. Um, as you heard this morning, they are amazing musicians that we have at this school, and they are excited, and we are excited to show you um, the talent that they have. So we would love for you to join us with, for that. Uh, we have also one last thing tonight, um, the alumni versus varsity and or staff um, basketball and volleyball games right here in the gym. It's always a lot of fun, and I believe that we will have a concession stand as well so you can come and get some snacks and watch some uh, people who haven't played for a while maybe um, take on some people who have played more recently, and that's a nice way to say it. Um, so the volleyball games will start at 8.45 this evening, and the basketball game will follow. There's one last event that I would like to mention and draw your attention to, and that is our uh, Alumni Association Brunch, which happens tomorrow morning at 9.30 in our cafeteria. Um, and it's a place to come to get some food and one last chance to fellowship together. And it also um, includes the time where we hopefully can pick a um, new Alumni Association committee who will help plan this weekend. Um, really does take a village to make sure that all of these things fall into place and that there are people here to present to you. Um, and so if, we, if you would like to be any part of that, uh, the brunch is a really good time to come and to be part of that planning process. And as far as our committee goes, we are looking for a vice president specifically. So if you know of anyone who would fit that bill or if you would like to do it yourself, um, please come to the brunch. And remember that there is a comment box just right here in the gym lobby. If you have any comments, questions, or concerns regarding the things that happened this weekend, um, please feel free to leave your name and email or phone number along with your comment just right back there in that box. And we are so glad that you have come back home to this place, and we hope that you enjoy more moments like these.
We're going to combine the benediction and the blessing on the food at this time. And so if you'll bow your heads for prayer, we'll have a close of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for bringing us here for Alumni Weekend for a chance to renew memories. Help us to cherish the good memories and look for the good in those that are around us. Please be with us as we visit and get caught up on years that we haven't been together. Be with those that haven't made it. You know where each one of them are. Bless them. Be with us and give us traveling mercies as we leave today. And I pray that you'll bless this food to our bodies and bless the hands that prepared it. And may we have great fellowship this afternoon. We ask it in your name. Amen.